Hello, Bumpy McSquigums here, and it's time to start up my Heroes of Might and Magic 3 HD Edition LP. Let's play. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest turn-based strategy series of all time. Heroes of Might and Magic, it's been something I've been pining to do for months and months and months and months and months. And I am finally going to start with the HD version of what is heralded as the best of the series. Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I'm going to get started with that in just a moment. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this. I'm going to be doing semi-occasional updates of this. And it might come in bulk. I don't know for certain. I'm going to play for as long as I feel like playing, which could be forever. You may never see me again. I don't know. But um, record it and then throw it up whenever I feel like I should throw up an episode. I'm going to put one up today and then who knows what the future holds. Either way, I'm going to fade to black right now. Let you guys see what the opening video looks like. Keep in mind, this game is 15 years old, remade in HD, so you'll see some dated stuff, but I think you'll enjoy it overall. If you've never seen Heroes of Might and Magic in any form, 1 through 6, here is a wonderful and great place to start. So, I'll be back in just a second. Seven weeks have passed since we set sail from Enroth. Slaves freed from our skirmishes with Regnan fleets talk of the turmoil in Arathia. I suspect their stories are true, but I must see the evidence with my own eyes. The ocean tides were kind enough to bury the fallen on its shores. However, the smoking ruins of Cloudfire greeted us with nothing but destruction and the stench of death. With no survivors, only the battlefield could tell me what happened here. Despite the breath of devastation, the presence of Minotaurs suggest a raiding party. However, the ranks were too well organized. This is the work of the Dungeon Overlords. Evidently, the wizards were prepared, but overrun nevertheless. These atrocities rend my heart and fuel my anger. Arathia's banner must be respected, never disgraced. Think of my beloved Roland and my son Nikolai, and how much further this war will carry me from them. But my duty is clear. My father's kingdom must survive. Arathia must not fall to its enemies. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the opening video. There'll be more videos scattered throughout the game, but let's hop in and get started. The only weird thing is, since this is a dated game, they don't have options available in certain areas, only like once you officially start the game. So if anything is off, I might have to adjust it as we go through. But we're going to hop in and we're going to start up the campaign. And we'll start with the Long Live the Queen campaign. We'll eventually go through all of these. I believe there's seven or six in total. I don't know. I think you get these two, these three, this one, and then I think there might be a bonus one that appears after you beat all of them. I'm not entirely certain, though. Either way, we'll start with Long Live the Queen, then we'll move to Dungeons and Devils, then possibly Spoils of War. Either way, let's get started. Alright, our landing has confirmed both our... Both are rumors and fears. With the death of my father, Arathia's lands are being greedily divided by her neighbors. Homecoming is the scenario, and uh, scenario description. To win, you must locate and capture the town of Tyrannius. 
Your heroes will be limited to the sixth level in this scenario, but your four strongest heroes will actually travel with you to the next scenario of this campaign. All right, and then we have these three different options that we can choose from. And your starting hero will begin with a first aid tent. Your starting hero will begin with 14 additional pikemen, or your treasury will receive an additional five mercury, sulfur, crystal, and gems. Now, I'm a pretty big proponent of the first aid tent in general, but not till usually later in the game when your units actually have more health. So I'm probably going to go with the pikemen. It's always good to have starting units, too. The resources aren't terrible either. I mean, all three of these options are okay, but I think as the first part of the scenario, first part of the game, the best choice is going to be the pikemen, and that is what I'm going to roll with. Our initial landing has captured a devastated outpost. Information is scarce and unreliable at best. Neighboring citizens have fled their villages. Remaining survivors tell conflicting stories. Evidence points to a Nyon invasion. Rally local militia and train them quickly. Destroy all hostile forces you encounter. Assume the worst. Assume we are at war. Assume the worst. All right. From Catherine Ironfist, Queen of Enroth. General, our initial landing shows evidence of an invasion by the dungeon overlords of Neon. Or Nyon. Nyon? Sure, we'll go with Nyon. She just said it and I already forgot how to pronounce it. It's totally fine. These people have been under Nyon military rule for the past 30 days. We assume the adjacent towns of Plinth, Mirham, and Tralia are also under Nyon or Eoful occupation. Well, other generals are fanning through the region to determine the extent of the territorial violation. For this area, your goal is simple. Establish a base of operations, rally local militia, determine the extent of the Nyon occupation, and find their invasion route, or route if you prefer. If you can secure their main base of operations, we will be able to quickly eliminate any remaining forces. Good luck, Commander. Alright, so there we go. And this is pretty much how the game is going to play out for the most part. There's going to be battle screens and a few other places and things will pop up for us, but... This is generally it. It looks wonderful. If you guys have ever played Heroes of Might and Magic 3, you will see that this looks pretty much how you remember it, only a little bit sharper. And if any of you have actually dallied with the HD mods for Heroes of Might and Magic 3, to get it to run in true 1080p uh, high definition, it turns into something about the 100th of the size. It's really, really, really small. Like your people are smaller than this little bush right here. It's, it's pretty scary. Alright, so what I'm going to do first is go to town. Now, there's a few disclaimers I need to make here. I am not the greatest person to ever play this game. I will make dumb choices. I might even get stuck a few times. But I have beaten this game before. I plan to do so again. And hopefully you guys are along for the ride and you can give me some pointers and tips. I mean, that's fine. But don't rage at me if I make stupid choices. It's going to happen. It's bound to happen. But, and if I say something wrong... You can correct me, just do it gently. Don't club me to death for it, okay? Alright, so this is your town interface. Uh, we have individual buildings where we can actually recruit people. We can go to the keep, or the fort as it were, and recruit everybody that's available to us at the time. Or we can go to the tavern and recruit additional heroes. There's a few things we can do. We can go to the mages guild and get a magic book if we don't have one and learn the spells that are here. Um, let's see what else. What else is there? There will eventually be a marketplace. All sorts of stuff happens throughout the town map here. And I do apologize, guys. I feel, I don't know, maybe I'm getting sick. I've been out in the snow the last few days, and maybe my immune system's a little bit meh. Either way, we're going to continue on like I'm perfectly fine. All right, so let's take a look here in the building menu. This is the hall. It's where you can build up any additional buildings that you would like to build. And most people would say the best thing you can do, and uh, there, there's arguments to be made for this, but right now we actually have a decent supply of gold, so I'm going to skip the town hall upgrade. But basically if you right click on any of the stuff, it will pop up with what the structure does, if there's any prerequisites you still need, like down here. We still need the blacksmith and barracks, um, or we need a blacksmith and barracks. We have the barracks, I thought we did. No, we don't have the barracks yet, I'm sorry. We need the blacksmith first, and then we need the barracks. Anyhow, um, the town hall gives us additional gold per day. Each turn is a day, so right now I, I'm not sure how much we're getting. Probably 500 gold per day. If we upgrade it, we get 1,000 gold per day. So the sooner and quicker you can upgrade your town hall, 
through all of its stages, you'll actually get more and more cash monies, and it's sweet, sweet, nice. The Citadel will increase the base creature growth, so this will actually allow you to recruit more troops by the beginning of each week. That's when the troops come back in. And then each of these buildings down here are going to allow you to recruit new and different troops. Like the barracks will allow you to, to recruit swordsmen. The monastery will allow you to get monks. The training grounds will allow you to get cavaliers. And the portal of glory will allow you to get angels. And then you have upgrades to each of those. Anyhow, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. Brotherhood of the Sword gives you a plus two troop morale during a siege. The blacksmith will allow you to get a ballista. And the marketplace, you can exchange goods for gold or gold for goods, blah, blah, blah. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is probably build a blacksmith. So there we have it. The blacksmith is built. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit all of the troops that are available to me. And I realize that's not a tremendously huge amount right now, but that's okay. We have all these troops sitting here as a defender army, but I'm probably going to go steal those. I believe in this first thing, sometimes you'll be able to tell whether enemies are hostile or not. It's a perk that you can get. Right now we don't know, but we can't really move without attempting a fight anyway, so I'm just going to go through, and I already know that these troops are actually going to join with us. So, the group of archers with a desire for greater glory wishes to join us. Yep, I accept that. That's going to be the same thing, and then we're going to have these pikemen that want to join us. And absolutely, we will accept that. And bam. There we go. We're going to head back in here, and uh, what I think I'm going to do is grab these troops. Ah, I'm just going to grab them all. It's fine. I, I'm a big believer and a firm uh, executor of the death ball strategy. What I like to do is basically walk around with one ginormous army or maybe two ginormous armies and just murder anything that comes through. Fight with one hero and then do everything else with single heroes like uh, resource gathering, troop ferrying, all that stuff. Now it's not the greatest of ideas to do that because it does have its issues but still it's it's the way I play. Alright, the Shrine of the Magic Gesture or Gesture. You come across an ornate shrine and attended by a group of rotund friars. In exchange for your protection they agree to teach you a spell, Quicksand. Unfortunately I did not buy the spell book while I was at town. Well that sucks, so we'll have to go back to town eventually anyhow. Um, I believe at this moment, like I said, we have a decent supply of money. It may behoove me to actually get another human out. So I'm going to go with the cleric. If you right-click, it shows you what they are. Specialty is bless. They have basic diplomacy and basic wisdom. The other option is our wizard here. Same basic stuff, except specialty is haste. Uh, the only thing I would say is different that you need to be aware of is the wizard is from a different... A different race, I guess you could say. There's like Haven, there's um, Inferno, all these different races or towns or whatever you want to give it a, a phrase to, or however you want to call them. So, unfortunately, the wizards being part of the. the um, I don't even remember what they're called. We'll just say part of the wizard cast. They have a different set of units normally, and they start with this different set. So, I prefer to stay with humans if I am humans. If I'm going, or Haven, if I am Haven, if I'm going to capture another town, that's when I'll start looking to hire other troops. Alright, so she actually started with a decent supply of troops, and as a cleric, she started with a spellbook. And there we go, we've learned the quicksand ability. If you double click on any of your heroes, or yeah, double click on any of your heroes, they'll appear over here with the hero overlay thing, and we have specialties, all the stuff that we saw before. It has a catapult, all heroes start with that. And it should show the spell book. And there it is. We can go to our primary hero, Christian, over here. And you'll see that he has basic artillery and a specialty is the ballista. He starts with one and it's right there. And he does not have a spell book right now. And then all the troops that is being carried by that. So, we're going to continue onward now with her. Uh, I'm not sure where I want to send her right now. I suppose we'll just go looking for some loose... Um, Loose resources laying around, it's gonna be sweet, sweet, nice. Alright, returning from Mirham, a scout enters the Karatid courtyard and reports Mirham is under occupation by Eofol and Nyan troops. Well, that's probably not good. Alright, that was just loose resources you'll find on the ground quite frequently. 
if you see a building like this that's actually going to provide you resources each day, the goal is to always capture those first because if you have it longer, it's going to benefit you more. So basically you would leave the resources on the ground if you only had enough movement to actually make it to the building. But this one's being guarded by lots of infernal troglodytes. But they are awed by the power of our forces and begin to scatter. We, of course, want to chase them down because if we don't, we don't get experience. So we're going to chase them down and do some murder. And here is how the combat works, ladies and gentlemen. You will see your troops. It'll only show one stack of troops um, per, like, split army thing that you had. I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get back to the other thing. I'm going to be a little all over the place, guys. I'm relearning the game as we play a little bit, so... I'm not 100% hip and up on the terminology of the game, and I'm just really, really excited to play it, so please bear that in mind while I stumble around and try to find my wording. So we have 122 pikemen standing on this particular spot. There is a turn order. It will not be shown here in any spot. You just learn over time what you can do. So we can shoot at this guy from across the way. And next time we have our archers, I'll show you a cool little thing that you may not have noticed. We'll move them up, we'll move our halberders over, and we will move these guys down. Now there's a chance that we can get high morale, which allows us to attack twice. Now archers have a range to about, I'd say roughly about here, here-ish, where they actually do the most damage. If you look, we have a broken arrow, that means that the damage is actually reduced attacking from that distance. And still, we did significant damage, he's only got one of the troglodytes left. And as the number lowers, say we got like 50 of these guys taken out, when we attack with them, we'll be attacking, let's see here, our attack is, it doesn't matter what our attack is, our damage is 1 to 3. So we do either 122 or, what is that, 366, somewhere in that range is what this stack of enemies would do, or uh, stack of units would do to an enemy unit. So if we lost half of that, we would do half the damage. So yeah, losing stacks definitely decreases your power using losing units. So, I mean, it's pretty much how you would expect it to be. So we took no casualties, we got 138 experience, and there we go. I know I'm over explaining stuff, hopefully I'll, have to, I'll be able to stop that in the next episode or two. But I want to make sure you guys understand what's going on. I realize the game is a little dated, though it's not overwhelmingly complicated either, so... Perhaps I am overthinking this. Alright, what I am going to do is actually head back to town with our main guy. And I'm going to switch over to our gal here. I'm probably going to leave the che treasure chests on the ground. Ooh, we should have gone over here. Alright, that was the stables that we went to. The stable master offers to provide your army with horses, increasing your movement for the remainder of the week. So you always want to try to be around a place that has horses at the beginning of the week. That way you have additional movement throughout the rest of the week, alright. The windmill each week will have a random resource in it. This time it was sulfur. The keeper of the mill announces, My lord, I've been working very hard to provide you with these resources. Come back next week for more. So each week you can hit up these and get free resources for it. And that is sweet, sweet, nice. So, yeah, with that, I, I believe we are... Hmm, I'd be careful. Apparently my mouse can actually go off of the screen. That's why you hear the muting. So that's going to be a little bit problematic. I don't think it's going to be, like, game-breaking problematic, but it might be somewhat problematic. All right, we do need to go back to town. And now that we're back at town, each day you're able to build one building if you have the resources to do so. I would like to get the barracks up and running. And then I'm just going to immediately recruit the swordsman because I don't like to forget things. So if I do it right away, I can't forget. All right, we're going to head back in here, and we're going to grab up those swordsmen right now. We're going to go over here. We're going to get the monastery going. And the more buildings that we have that produce units, the more you get each week. So keep in mind, stuff all ties in together. So say we actually got all the way through the training grounds, right? Which we'll have to build the stables at some point, um, which is right there. Uh, say we get through the, sta uh, the training ground, that means all the base buildings are done, so we'll always get the maximum amount of units out of each week, base units. Then if we can increase the citadel to um, the castle, I believe this is the final stage, we'll get an additional like 100% of what we're already getting. 
So it's it's some good stuff. It's good stuff to get your unit producing buildings going early on, especially. Aha! I almost forgot again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you're like, he's not gonna remember the spell book, but I did. I did remember it. All right, we'll talk about stats and stuff soon, but not quite yet. All right, we learned the quicksand again. There's a witch's hut over there, which I think we're gonna send Adela over to. Uh, I'm gonna leave, like I said, I'm gonna leave the boxes on the ground for now. We'll see what we need to do with those a little later on. An ancient witch living in a strange hut welcomes you, teaching you luck for her own inscrutable purposes. All right, well, luck is not bad for a might hero. It's only okay for a magic hero. Sadly, the cleric is a magic hero, so it's not all that fantastic. However, that means that any time we want to get luck, we can go over there and actually do it, so... One of your aides approaches and hands you a scroll mentioning that the scout who just delivered it was suffering from numerous injuries. You unfurl and read the scroll. Plinth is occupied by Eofel's troops. That's not good. Alright, we are going to get luck on our boy here. There we go, basic luck. And we are going to go attack the Troglodytes. They are once again afraid of us and fearful. But we're going to chase them down. It's free experience. Might as well take it, right? Alright. So what I believe I'm going to do is move here. The Troglodyte should not be able to close with me. We'll focus our archery powers down below. Down here. Our monk should be able to go next. The monk is quite strong. There's only three of them that did more damage. Uh, a decent amount of damage compared to what our other individual did. I believe our crossbowman should be able to finish this. There it is. So it's about two-thirds of the map before you get to full range power with your archer type unit. Yeah, it is what it is. Alright, well, I was hoping to be able to gather the stone resource immediately, but that is not the case. However, maybe I can get in there. Let's see. We'll gather the resource, and yes we can. Alright, so we'll get two stone per day now that I've done that. And up here, from the top of the observatory, you're able to see distant lands. So if we take a look over here, we can actually see quite a bit more. I wish there was a way to move the map without... I apologize, folks. Without um, having to move to the edges of the screen. That is going to be mildly annoying. I'll see if I can find a fix for that as we progress. And we have not built a building, so we need to do so. I believe the stables is going to be next. We're still looking okay on money. We've used about half of what we, what we were hoping to use, but that's not too bad. All right, we're going to end the turn. And we are going to attack. The Gogs are afraid of us and wants to run. We're going to chase them down. Now, these are also ranged troops, so we might actually end up losing a few folks here. So what I'm going to do is move him forward, and then I'm going to go into my spell book. And here we have a Magic Arrow, and I am going to cast Magic Arrow on this guy. It did far less than I was hoping, so we're going to continue to shoot him. And yeah, it's not great. And ideally, you would probably want to attack the guy with the most, so he would do less damage, but eh, it is what it is, and that's what we're going to do, I suppose. Alright, we're going to come down here, and we're going to move along, and I believe they're going to get to move... That was a high morale bonus right there, ladies and gentlemen. It means we get to move a second time. Sometimes you get dual attacks out of it. Alright, we should be able to do some pretty decent damage. Alright, well they focused on the griffin. They did do some damage to it, but it wasn't the end of the world, so it is what it is. Fortunately, our griffin is just short of being able to close with them. That is unfortunate, but maybe we'll have enough power to actually finish them off. There we go, a little bit more damage, and... Hopefully morale boost. Yeah. Right. If you close within a melee range of ranged units, they can no longer shoot. They have to go melee with you. And their melee attack is almost always, it actually might be always weaker than the ranged attack. Alright, so our morale is pretty high. We're sitting pretty. We lost one unit though. Which makes me a little sad, but we should be able to finish this off right now. And Blamo. Down he goes. And we did 350 damage with our little stack of pikemen there. And there we go. Okay, so we are going to go here and recruit some more pikemen. And that is free pikemen every week. These buildings will allow you to recruit more and more pikemen each week. We're going to head up here and attack the, ser or the, hell the hellhounds. Also afraid of us, we don't care. We're going to stand our ground and 
Those are an upgraded version of the Hellhounds. So if you take a look, we have our pikemen. We have 100, 136 of those. And we have our crossbowmen. Or, yeah, crossbowmen. Yep. Come on, show it to me. I don't want to show it to me. Archer, our archer. There we go. Down here we have our marksmen, which are upgraded um, archers. And our halberd, our halberders, which are upgraded pikemen. And all the wonderful fun stuff that goes with it. Alright, well, we don't have much magic, as I'm sure you can tell at this point. But what we're going to do is we're going to wait our turn. And you can do that. You can wait until the end of the turn. And the way it works is the, the creatures with the highest speed are going to move first, right? And then if you wait, it'll it'll wait your turn. And then the next person with the highest speed goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. To say I waited every single one of these people and they all moved, when it was our turn to move again, it would go in reverse order, so the slowest units would actually go first, all the way up to the fastest. So, just in case you were wondering how all that worked, now you know. Alright, a little bit of damage there. I'm not 100% certain how this is going to work, so I'm going to move up here. I'm going to try to take out this guy. I don't think it's a good idea to send him in. Unfortunately, can't quite get to where we want to go with them. I'm going to go for the shot on this guy. That worked out. I'm going to take the eight shots. That did nothing. We're going to try to defend our archer. Okay, so we traded a swordsman there. We're going to defend instead of actually waiting. And as you see, we're still within the range to attack, which is sweet, sweet, nice. Attack the swordsman, or with the swordsman. Now, I believe these doggies don't allow counterattacks. I'm not 100% certain on that, though. There are certain units that do not allow counterattacking. There is no flanking bonus, so there was really no reason for me to move, but I still decided I wanted to do it. And it worked out. So we lost four halberders and one swordsman. Not too bad, considering we're up against, what is that, 25 units? It's not too, too bad. And they did manage to close with us. Alright, basic offense is really good. Basic offense increases all hand-to-hand -hand damage inflicted by your hero's troops by 10%. Advanced artillery is sweet, sweet, nice as well. Gives control of the ballista to the hero, allowing two shots with a 75% chance to inflict double damage. Both of those are really nice. We already have artillery, so this is a good skill to pick up. And I'll explain the skills here in just a second, and then I'm going to probably break off the episode. So let's do that now. Alright, as you see, we only have enough room for eight skills. We'll have our specialty, and we'll have eight skills. So we have basic leadership, which allows us to have higher morale, which allows us to have those double turns that you saw. Uh, basic artillery gives control of the ballista, allowing two shots with 50% to inflict double damage. Basic luck increases luck by one. Now, when you get lucky, when you actually hit with a luck strike, it does double damage or crits or somehow they figure that in there and it does a lot of stuff so you want that luck is amazing leadership is amazing basic offense is obviously amazing increases all your melee troops there's going to be archery as well and several other various things tactics is another one of my favorite it allows you to move your troops around at the beginning of the battle and i want to say logistics allows you to move further in the map i like all those things so hopefully we'll get those it is somewhat randomly generated to choose your your different skills so that kind of sucks but you can always you can always try and hope and pray and if you don't like one of the options like for a new skill you can always upgrade one of your other ones if that is available to you and with her basic wisdom is a really good skill to have it allows you to learn higher level magic luck not so much and basic diplomacy I almost never do this so it is simply what it is but with the specialty of Bless, that is pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So, either way, that's pretty much going to do it for the skills. I think I'll take one additional turn here, and then we'll, we'll break off the episode. So I'm not going to go to the water wheel just yet. I'm going to go over here. Now, this is a mercenary camp. What it does, if I recall correctly, is allows me to get plus one to my attack, which is a permanent benefit and bonus. Come up here to get the water wheel. That's 500 monies. Each week we can go check out the leprechaun, or we can go over here and get a permanent stat upgrade for knowledge, which is nice. That allows us to cast more spells and all sorts of good stuff like that. Once again, we take a look over here on the right hand side and we see that our 
Town doesn't have an X through it, which means we can build another building. We are on day five. So the training grounds are going to go up. And we are starting to hemorrhage money a little bit now. I'm going to wait to... No, I'm not. I never like to wait. There's a chance that you're going to have a bad week where you don't actually gain any additional troops. So I prefer myself to always hire troops if I have the money to do so. Alright, leading his griffin mount, a scout bearing the cuts of arrows and harpy scratches approaches, kneels and delivers his report. General, Tra General Tralia is under the strong hand of Nyan monsters. Well, that sucks. Alright, here we go. The attack skill is available to us. And we are pretty excited by that. Now we're going to go up and get that knowledge ability as well. We don't use a lot of magic, but we want to be able to use some. And the higher the knowledge and stuff that we can actually get, the better it is for us. These permanent stat increases are good to get with any and all of your troops and should always be considered critically important to grab up. Alright, well I'm not going to linger too much further in this episode and I'm not going to go too much further from days. I'm probably going to hit up the mystical garden and then hit the tree. The tree is going to cost us money more than likely or some resource to give us a free level. So we'll probably end up doing that. now. Keep in mind, they are limited to level 6 in this particular scenario, so it might not be useful. Alright, our money is still holding. It's not super high, but it's still holding. So what I'm going to do is increase the Citadel, upgrade that, and that's going to allow us to get 50% more base creatures. So let's take a look at what that means. Um, let's go here to this. Uh, does it tell us how many is going to be recruitable? No, I'm sorry guys. I wanted, to, I wanted to show it off, but I, I can't. Alright, so we're going to do that, and you're going to have to trust me. It's a good thing. Alright, we're going to go through our first week, and then that's where I'm going to break it off, folks. Alright, we're going to end our turn, and we're going to head up to uh, the Leprechaun. And we got five sweet, sweet magical uh, crystals. Now this tower over here is going to give me plus one bonus to defense. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move her immediately into town. And probably gather troops and then ferry them over when it is time. Alright, and unfortunately we cannot build the castle because we don't have quite enough... What is it? Wood. We don't have enough wood. Which sucks. I mean, for that to be the limiting factor is a little disappointing. It's somewhat depressing, not gonna lie. I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to move. I suppose I could move the map with the... There we go, we'll do that. If I have to go to the right, that's how I'll do it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the workaround. Workaround. Alright, so, since I can't do that, I guess the next best thing is going to be for me to get the town hall going. So I shall do it. Upgrading your building structures. Building structures? That's kind of redundant, I realize. Your creature structures, or buildings, is really useful, and it does make them quite a bit stronger. But, at this point, it's not as important as getting money and getting more creatures. Because you can always upgrade later, and you can upgrade weaker troops to the stronger ones as you go. So, there is that. We're going to sit there and end the turn, and it's going to be a new week. Astrologers proclaim the week of the squirrel. All dwellings increase population. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, have, we're going to head back or hop into town one final time. The head groom approaches, leading a fine-looking warhorse. This steed will help speed you in your travels. Alas, his nurse will wane with a lot of heavy riding and must return for a fresh mount at the start of the week. So, as the havens, that's one of your benefits. You can actually just visit your town, and if you have a stables, you will get a mount each week. And that will increase your movement, so you don't have to actually visit the external stables. Alright, we're going to come back here, and we can do the castle at this point, but there's really not much of a point in doing that right now. You want to do this before the beginning of the next week so by day seven we need to make sure this is done so what we're going to do is try to build up our city hall and make it a little bit more powerful and potent i don't want to recruit too many troops so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the archers and i'm going to do the monks and i think that's going to be enough i yeah that's going to be good i'm going to leave the rest there now, this is just me. Most people would say, just get them all. Go. Who cares? You can always build up more later, and there's going to be gold laying on the ground that we haven't collected yet. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm just going to turn this stuff 
and the gold as opposed to experience. I'll read what this says so you guys understand. You can either choose gold or experience, and it says, After scouring the area, you fall upon a hidden treasure cache. You may take the gold or distribute it to the peasants for experience. Which do you choose? Since we are limited to level 6, I generally like to keep these around until near the end of the map, and then if I need to boost anybody in experience to get to level 6, I would do it. But instead, I'm just going to go right now and get some quick cash monies because, well, I want to. And it's sweet, sweet, nice. Alright, well, we're going to head up here, grab the defensive thing. There we go, plus one defensive skill, the Moreletto Tower. The soldiers living in the tower teach you a few new defensive tricks. There we go, and some more cash monies, and then we head back visiting the Leprechaun and all the other stuff along the way. He's actually going to head all the way back to town, Christian is, and he's going to get himself a mount and maybe some more troops. Either way, folks, that's going to do it for the first episode and the first look at the first installment of first whatever of Heroes of Might and Magic 3 HD Edition. And hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm going to continue this, like I said, randomly throughout. Whenever I feel like tossing up some episodes, I will. I'm really excited about the game, and hopefully I get a little less addle-brained and a little less like, oh my gosh, there's so much I want to tell you about, and I just kind of can focus a little bit better and give you a little less kind of all-over commentary, like I do with XCOM and other stuff. Either way, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it, and I will catch you guys next time with more Heroes of Might Magic 3. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later.